Welcome back, y'all. In part one of our electrical series, we talked about this, the electrical schematic, and we broke down each of the components and what they do on your off-grid electrical system. In part two, this video today, we are going to be breaking down sizing your battery bank, talking about what kinds of batteries you need and how they should be wired, so stay tuned. Hi there, and welcome to Healthy Trails. I'm Steven. And I'm Jackie. And together, we created Healthy Trails to bring wellness to you. We're traveling around the U.S. in our self-converted school bus and home on wheels to meet you where you're at and help guide you along your individual wellness journey. We can't wait to explore an adventure with you as we navigate together towards a happier and healthier life. All right, so it was originally my intention to try to finish up our electrical series in two videos. I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, rather than overwhelming you guys with too much too fast, I'm going to try to break these into some more digestible pieces for you guys. Some shorter videos that focus in on some specific components. So we will be hopefully finishing up in the next two videos. Uh, for this one, particularly today, we are gonna be hitting you with everything you need to know regarding your battery bank. Um, Unfortunately, there will be just a little bit of math. I promise I will keep it super simple. I'll try to make that step by step for you guys. So you can follow along with your own system. So um, getting a pen and paper out or opening up another document, maybe not a bad idea and taking some notes and working along with me as I go through our example of all the numbers that we used to get our battery bank ready to go. And if you need another reference, I am putting all of this information from the previous two videos in blog form on our website. So check the link below for that. Um, but basically, we'll get right into it, right? The first equation, and this is one that you will have to know, and we'll actually reference this several times as we move through this video today, and that is going to be the watts equals voltage times amperage equation. So before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and just break down these variables real quick to give you that base understanding moving forward. Um, the first variable, voltage, this can be looked at as the force in the electrical system. It's um, sort of the pressure, if you will. And it's practical in dictating what types of appliances that you can be using with your system, whether that's a 12 volt DC or 110 to 120 volt AC. And we did talk about this just a little bit in part one. So go back and check that out if this is still a little murky for you. The second variable will be the amperage. And amperage can be seen as sort of the flow of electricity going through the wire. Um, practically speaking, if you have a higher amperage, you will need then a larger gauged wire, a larger wire to carry that flow. And this will be coming back into play as well as we size those wires later on in this video. And the last variable, wattage, is sort of the culmination of the previous two. It's gonna be the power associated in your, in your system. It's gonna show you how much uh, power an appliance is using. So basically, um, just know what that equation is and I will be able to hopefully walk you through using it in several different practical applications as well. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead by first starting off, uh, sizing out the heart of your electrical system, the battery bank. And the easiest way to do this is to first start by writing out an exhaustive list of all of the appliances that you can possibly foresee using in a single day. Next to those appliances, write down their wattage. That is the number that you could probably find from the charging cord, if not from the manufacturer online. Um, you could even look online for several of the estimates of general appliances as well. Um, but in either case, you're writing that down. Next to that number, you wanna write down how many hours you plan on using that device per day as well. Um, so for example, I have a laptop that takes about 50 watts to charge. I might be charging it for four hours, so that's gonna be 200 watt hours. That's the metric that we want to find out. So we want to be able to multiply all of those numbers out and add them up to get to your total watt hours consumption per day. So for my example, in our schoolie, we estimated somewhere around 833 watt hours would get us through one day's worth of power consumption. Um, in sizing out your battery bank, it might not be a bad idea to give yourself a little bit of extra leeway, depending on how you plan on charging. Um, for example, if you're primarily gonna be using solar charging and you live in the desert, one day's worth of power should be fine. 
But if you're out in, say, Seattle, you are probably going to want to give yourself at least an extra two, three, four days of not having adequate sunlight to charge that battery bank back up. So we decided to be safe. We gave ourselves two days worth. So you can take that number then, your total watt hours consumption, and multiply that by two for our case, um, out to 1,666. Or you can um, multiply it by three or four or however many days that you foresee needing to have a little bit of extra padding for that electrical system. Now, most batteries are going to be measured in amp hours rather than watt hours. So what we can do from here is convert that back so you can use that same equation that we learned to begin the video. And if you take for our example, the uh, 1,666 watt hours divided by 12 volts, which is our voltage of the system, that's gonna leave us with 139 amp hours of battery needed for two days um, with no sun charging whatsoever. Now, if I had a few tips for you guys on starting off the sizing, go small have less of a solar array, less of a battery bank than you think you need. You can always add to your pre-existing battery bank or your solar array. Um, if you were going to pick one over the other, I would also probably recommend that you go with extra solar panels as relatively speaking, those are much cheaper. So try to maybe bank on being able to charge up that battery bank um, a little bit faster rather than having a larger bank to charge, if that makes sense. So now that we know the general size in amp hours of your battery bank, we also need to know what types of batteries that are gonna be best used for that off-grid electrical system. And it's really important to note here that we do not wanna be using automotive batteries. Um, instead, we want to use those deep cycle batteries. The automotive batteries are gonna be shallow cycle and they're really meant to discharge quickly to start your vehicle and then recharge quickly to do it again. Uh, these deep cycle batteries, however, are going to be designed to be slowly discharged and recharged over time. Um, that's definitely gonna be the route that you wanna go. Now, knowing that, there are a few different types of deep cycle batteries that we can talk about next. So really, there's about three different options of deep cycle batteries that we can consider when talking about your off-grid electrical. And the first is gonna be your flooded lead acid batteries. I actually wouldn't recommend these. It's gonna require more ventilation, uh, a little bit more maintenance than I think it's worth for the money that you're saving. So that leaves us then with instead two other types of batteries. The first being sealed lead acid batteries. These, um, they're gonna be much cheaper than the alternative, which are the lithium batteries, the lithium iron phosphate batteries, uh, by quite a bit um, actually. However, there's quite a few caveats here as well. They are not going to last nearly as long as the lithium batteries and really you can only discharge these uh, to probably about 50% to maintain that battery health. And even then you're probably looking at about three to five years before you'll have to replace these types of batteries, the sealed lead acid. The lithium on the other hand are going to last a whole heck of a lot more. They're going to have a whole lot more of those life cycles for you and you can discharge them honestly to probably 10% or even lower in some cases. So you get a lot more bang for your buck there. However, again, it is a large difference. There is uh, quite a gap in price there. Um, if you have the budget for lithium, absolutely go lithium. But at the end of the day, you're not gonna go wrong with the sealed lead acid as well. And now that we have a, a little bit of a background in batteries, let's pick it back up with our example again. So we knew for our system, that we needed at least 140 amp hours of usable battery, right? To be able to power all of our electronics for at least two days. Um, we did not have the budget for the lithium batteries. So we did go with some sealed lead acid batteries. And since you can only discharge those to about 50%, we knew that we had to double that 140 number. So 280 amp hours is what we needed from a total battery bank perspective when buying and we ended up going with actually three 100 amp hour batteries giving us that 300 amp hour battery bank total and again if you did go with the lithium option on this one that step is unnecessary um, but moving on with our example we now are left with three batteries and we need to wire those together before we can use those in our system which takes me to my next educational point and that is the difference between wiring in parallel versus wiring in series so wiring in parallel you are basically connecting 
all of the negatives together and all of the positives together. And this is going to keep the voltage the same and actually raise the amperage. So in our particular example, that's exactly what we want, right? We are raising the amp hour, the capacity of our battery bank and keeping the voltage right at 12 volts where we want it. Now, if we were instead to wire these in series, we would connect the negative to the positive and the negative to the positive and so on. And this would actually raise the voltage by a multiple of how many batteries we had. So in that case, it would be 36 volts and it would actually keep our amperage the same. So we would only have a 100 amp hour battery. So you do not want to do this for your batteries if you have 12 volt batteries. Um, probably more information than you need to know, but if you do go with six volt batteries, which I know some people have done, will do, you can actually wire them in series or series parallel to get you to the same 12 volt system in the end. I think it's just a lot easier to keep your battery bank at 12 volts, get those 12 volt batteries. Um, that's just my opinion. All right, and that about wraps it up for the day on our battery talk. Uh, make sure that you are looking out for that next video where we will pick it up right where we left off. We're actually gonna be using that number that we came to at the end of this video, your usable battery bank that needs to be charged each day and using that to help us calculate how much solar that we need, uh, how those panels should be wired, the configuration, how big of a charge controller you'll need and all that other good stuff that goes along with solar charging. So be looking out for that video. And again, uh, I have linked in the description of this video, the blog in which I cover all of the information from this video. We will also be updating that blog page with the information from our previous videos, as well as hopefully the future videos coming. So make sure that you uh, check that out. You can bookmark that for future reference. And if you haven't checked out the Schoolie Resources playlist yet, you can do that on our channel as well. That's just basically that one-stop shop for all of our videos pertaining to converting a Schoolie or van. And if you have any other questions at all, drop those in the comments. I'm happy to try to answer those best I can. Again, disclaimer one more time, uh, I am not a professional uh, electrician, so please consult with that professional maybe before you start wiring and take my advice with a grain of salt. Um, I think that about does it for me, guys. Anyway, as always, best of luck on the builds, and I'll see you in the next video.